In Unity 6.3, it's now possible to create terrain shaders with Shader Graph. This means that Shader Graph users can now customize the appearance and behavior of terrain shaders in order to make terrain render faster or add features and customize the way that terrain works, all without writing any code. Previously, Unity only had one terrain shader Unless you were an engineer, there was no way to improve this shader or add features to it. But now, artists can use Shader Graph to customize the way terrain looks and improve its performance. Let's take a look at some examples of what can be done with Shader Graph for terrain shaders. This terrain is using the Terrain Lit Shader that's written in code. Notice that the terrain textures have pretty significant tiling artifacts. Also, there's a hard line where the terrain transitions between the more detailed foreground shader and the simplified background shader. Because of this hard line, we have to move the boundary back so that it's less noticeable, which makes the terrain more costly to render. This version of the terrain is using a shader graph shader. Here, we're using hexagon tiling to remove the repetition artifacts. We're also using distance fading to blend out the hard line between foreground and background, which means we can move that boundary closer to the camera and make the terrain cheaper to render. This example is also using a custom texture packing method that only uses two textures per layer instead of three, further reducing the rendering cost. Now we're getting fancy. This version of the shader uses Shader Graph's parallax occlusion mapping to give the surface details more depth and shape without needing to use tessellation. There's no extra geometry here. This is all done with ray marching. And this version of the terrain is using a Shader Graph shader that uses a texture array and dither blending to drastically reduce the overall number of texture samples required. It renders significantly faster than the others, making it ideal for mobile or XR devices. Using Shader Graph, you can make all kinds of customizations to the terrain and get the perfect blend of features and performance for your project. So let's take a look at how it works. When I create a new Shader Graph asset, I select Create Shader Graph URP Terrain Lit. That creates a new shader with the material type set to Terrain Lit, and now I can build my shader using the graph and apply it to a terrain. Inside the graph itself, there's a new node called Terrain Texture. I can use this node to bring in all of the texture data from the terrain system and use it in the shader. The index input is the terrain layer I want to use, and I select the texture I want to bring in using the drop down at the bottom. The other input ports on the right allow me to bring in the terrain layer's parameters like normal scale and color tint. I can use this node to build a subgraph that looks like this. This subgraph represents the logic for a single layer of terrain. It's sampling the textures and then passing out the results. And then I can combine several of these layer subgraphs like this to create a full terrain shader. It's pretty simple. But the nice thing is, you don't have to build any of this yourself because we've done it for you. Along with Shader Graph support for terrain, the Shader Graph team has also created a new set of sample content importable from the package manager to provide example Shader Graph terrain shaders. The sample content includes a large set of pre-made terrain shaders, a full set of terrain layer subgraphs, and a long list of other subgraphs that'll make it easier for you to construct terrain shaders. In Shader Graph, these are all available in the new Terrain category in the Create Node menu. To explore this content, 
Let's take a look at the sample scene that comes with it. This sample scene has a series of small sample terrain assets, each with a different terrain shader applied. I'll select the Terrain Sample Showcase at the top of the hierarchy panel. Now I get a nice description of the scene in the inspector, so I can see exactly what's available here, and then navigate to all of the samples at the bottom. I can use the drop down to directly select the sample I'm interested in and jump to it, or I can use the arrow buttons to see all of the samples in order. Each sample terrain has a billboard that describes the unique features of the shader and lists its characteristics, including a score for the performance cost of the shader relative to the existing code version of the terrain shader. This should help you get an idea about how the various features compare with each other and see their relative performance costs. There's quite a list of examples but let's take a look at just a couple of them. They're listed here in the dropdown in order from cheapest to render down to the most expensive on performance. CNM Simple Blend is a very basic shader without a lot of extra features. Here you can see that its relative cost is 0.88, which means that it's slightly cheaper than the code version of the terrain shader. And it's doing 13 texture samples. The CSNOH Auto Material Hex example is using hexagon tiles for breaking up the repetition. It's also blending between the terrain layers using the slope, angle, and altitude of the terrain instead of requiring the artist to hand paint where the layers are applied. CSNOH Procedural Height uses a procedural method to break up texture tiling. It's roughly two and a half times the cost of the code version. It's doing 21 texture samples. And if we pick the first example in the list, CHNOS Array Dither, you can see that it's less than half of the cost of the code version. It's packing a lot of the textures into a texture array and blending them using dithering. This allows it to do four layers of terrain in only six texture samples total. Using this type of technique, you should be able to make very low cost terrain that can work on low end mobile devices and XR headsets. We've only seen four examples here, but there's a huge variety of blending techniques, packing schemes, tile breakup, and various performance options available. This sample content is a great way to see what's possible when making terrain shaders with Shader Graph. And all of the available layer types and helper subgraphs will speed up the process of making your own terrain shaders. Bringing the Shader Graph terrain sample content into your project is easy. Just open the Package Manager window by selecting Window, Package Management, Package Manager. Then select the Shader Graph package on the left and select the Samples tab on the right. Scroll down to the Terrain Shaders sample and hit the Import button. The sample content will be brought directly into your project. Once imported, you can find the sample content in the Project window under Samples, Shader Graph, Your Version Number, and Terrain Shaders. You can find the shaders in the shaders folder and all of the helper subgraphs, including the layers, in the subgraphs folder. To get started, open the scene in the scenes folder that corresponds to your render pipeline. New in Unity 6.3, shader graph support for terrain gives artists a huge amount of power and flexibility for crafting their own solutions for terrain shaders and the new terrain sample content provides examples to help you learn and a large set of nodes to make shader creation faster and easier. We'd love to hear from you. Post your feedback in the Shader Graph forum.